In this continuation of our basic electrical conversation, I want to talk about transformers. Now, transformers are going to be found in almost every single piece of electrical equipment out there. It starts at the pole outside the building, and then as we come into the smaller HVAC equipment, it's also going to be found in the HVAC equipment. The transformer is a non-mechanical electrical device. Okay, it's both a load and a source. The primary side of the transformer uses electrical current. The secondary side of the transformer produces electrical current. So when you see it in a schematic, it is on one side of it, the primary side, it's a load. The secondary side is going to be a source for another circuit. So if we take a look at the schematic symbol and the layout of the transformer, okay, we have one side of it. We have the primary coil, okay? It's basically wires wrapped around an iron core, which is the transformer core. The secondary side is my output voltage. VP stands for voltage primary. VS stands for voltage secondary, okay? The schematic symbol for it is actually real easy. It's two coils with a magnetic core. Okay, those are our transformer symbols we're going to see, is this one. On some more scientific schematics and some older schematics, you'll see that, but that isn't as often anymore. So you're going to see the two coils with the magnetic core in the center. That's your transformer symbol. Primary winding, secondary winding. Looks like that. Okay. Occasionally, you'll see what's called a multi-tap transformer. We'll talk more about that, but I just want you to see the symbol. We have our secondary here, okay, and then we have our primary, which has the ability to have more than a single voltage environment. So again, we have a multi-tap transformer. The transformer primary is the side of the transformer that voltage and current is applied to. It's a set of windings wrapped around an iron core. These windings produce a magnetic field. Okay, so again, this is a transformer. My primary wiring is the two, in this case, is the black and white. If you look at the label, it tells you the voltages. But I know from experience that when you have a black and a white wire on a transformer, this is going to be a 120 volt primary. And because this is an HVAC transformer, this is going to be... So we have our 120 volt, and this is going to be labeled 24. We'll get into if it's actually 24 in a little bit here. So there's two screws here that is my secondary side. The transformer secondary is the side of the transformer which produces electrical current. These windings are also wrapped around the same magnetic core. The secondary side is electrically isolated from the primary. It's its own circuit. I should never be able to take a resistance and get a reading between the primary and the secondary side of the transformer. So the transformer secondary in this case is not two screws. It's the yellow and the blue wire coming off the transformer. These are my primary sides. If you look at the labels, it will tell you exactly what the what the label what the wire colors mean okay in this case this transformer has a breaker on it as well okay three 3.7 amps so if my secondary gets a short or something like that this breaker will pop it won't blow the transformer i really like to use transformers that have breakers on it that's what i replace everything with okay in this case we know that our um black is going to be our common Okay, white is going to be my 120, red is my 208, orange is 240, and you can just see it in the label there. Okay, so it gives you an ability to use multiple voltages on a single unit. That's great to have in your service truck or when you, when you need to carry one part to serve multiple purposes. A step-down transformer reduces the voltage from the primary to the secondary side. A step-up transformer increases the voltage from the primary to the secondary. The ratio of the windings between the primary and secondary determines how much the voltage is changed. 
keeping it real simple. If the primary side has 10 windings and the secondary side has 1 windings, this is a ratio of 10 to 1. If this is the case, if the transformer is supplied with 120 volts, it will deliver 12 volts on the secondary side. Okay, so this is a step down transformer. Primary has more windings than the secondary. That's because we want the primary to produce a whole bunch of magnetism, but the secondary is only going to pick a portion of that magnetism up and create current from it. Transformers are rated by the voltage on the primary side and volt amps on the secondary side. Most primary voltages in the HVAC industry are 120, 208 slash 230, 240, and 480. Secondary side in the transformer industry is 24 volts. In reality, this range can range between 24 and 28 volts. Most transformers that I've come across are actually producing 26 volts without a load. And with a load, they're around 24 volts. Multi-tap transformers have multiple input windings for different voltages. They have a single output voltage. This is another example of a multi-tap transformer. I have three taps here for my primary. One of these is going to be a common, okay, and one of these is going to be like 120, and one of these is going to be um, 208, 240 or 208, yeah. So if I have L2 here, if my building has a three-phase building, I'm going to put, oops, I'm going to put L1 here. If my building is a standard 240 volt single-phase building, I'm going to put L1 there. And I'm going to cap, I'm going to put a cap or a protective tape or something over the terminal I'm not using. My 24 volt side, C and 24, that's my secondary side. It's usually very clearly labeled. And if you look close at this label, you'll see that this is a 24 volt 40 VA transformer, 40 volt amps. The label will give you the wire colors and pins for the different voltages. Any unused terminals or wires must be individually wire nutted off or covered. These are live wires and terminals and they can short out. Don't put the additional wires under the same wire nut. They have to be individually wire nutted off or you're going to short the transformer. So again, if you're just using this for 120 volts, you're going to be using the black and you're going to be using the white. You're going to cap off the end of the two additional wires. My blue and yellow are my low voltage side. You're going to be using those. Occasionally, step-down transformers are used in higher voltage package units for non-control voltage loads. They're often used to run lower voltage components such as ignition controllers or combustion blower motors. That's where I see the most frequently is combustion blower motors in gas rooftop units. The combustion blower motors may be a 110 volt, 120 volt motor. The rooftop unit's a 480 volt motor, so we're going to use a step-down transformer to get from one to the other. Step-down transformers from loads can range from 230, 460, and 720 primary to 110 volts secondary. These are larger transformers and have to be properly sized. Do not use a standard transformer to do this. This is an example of a step of a step-down transformer with multiple taps on each side. Step-up transformers raise the voltage from the primary to the secondary side. Primarily used for ignition purposes in gas-fired and oil-fired applications. This is an example of a step-up oil ignition module. My two wires, black and black, because you really only have one choice here, um, is going to be 120 volts or 240 volts, depending on the system and the label on the transformer. My output is these two springs right here that connect to the igniters. Okay. This is going to be a 10,000 volt output. Some of them are going up as high as 14,000 and 16,000 volts right now. Very little amperage, but it's enough to give you a real jolt if you touch this. Do not put your meter 
on these outputs in order to measure voltage. There's other ways to do it. We'll talk about that further in the oily oil section. Step up transformers are also found in gas ignition modules. Integrated spark ignition, the output can be over 15,000 volts from a um, 24 volt input. Okay. Troubleshooting steps for transformers actually pretty easy. Check voltage to the primary side. If you don't have voltage coming to the transformer, find out why. Okay, no sense in going further with the transformer if you don't have voltage. Check voltage on the secondary side. If no, if you have voltage, there's no problem with the transformer. Something else is going on. No voltage. We're going to continue on and take resistances. Lock out and tag out the system. Isolate the transformer primary. In other words, you need to disconnect it from the rest of the circuit. Check the resistance of the primary winding. If OL or infinite, the winding is open. If zero, the winding is shorted. Either way, you have a bad transformer. Reconnect the primary if the tests are good. Isolate the secondary. Disconnect it from the low voltage circuit. Take the resistance reading of the secondary side. If OL or infinite, the winding is open. If zero, the winding is shorted. Either way, you have a bad transformer. If those test out properly, take the resistance reading from the primary winding to the metal case of the transformer. Take the resistance reading from the secondary to the metal case of the transformer. Both should be OL or infinite. If it isn't, you have a bad transformer. Take the resistance reading from the primary to the secondary windings. Remember, these are electrically isolated. You should never have a resistance between the primary and the secondary. Or better yet, you should never have a path. Okay, it should always be OL or infinite. If not, the insulation between the windings has failed and you need to replace the transformer. If either the primary or secondary does not have good resistance readings, short it to ground or shorted winding to winding, replace the transformer. If you replace the transformer because of a failure on the secondary side, you need to find the cause. Do not power the system up without a few more checks. Before powering on a new transformer, place a fuse or circuit breaker between the transformer output and the secondary circuit. Size the fuse just under the maximum output of the transformer. If possible, use a transformer that has a fuse or a breaker as a part of the transformer, like the one I showed you earlier. If the fuse or breaker trips, you'll need to dig into the secondary control system and find the short or the overload. A secondary side that fails will do so again, because there's a problem someplace. These don't fail on their own. Okay, the secondary side of the transformers are actually pretty sturdy and they require something to be failing to cause it to fail. Primary cause of failure, age. Eh, things don't last forever. High voltage surge on the primary side and heat. These are three things that can cause the primary side of the transformer to fail. Secondary side. Even though I don't have a slide for it most often, it's some short or overload on the secondary circuit. For example, if someone installed a humidifier, electronic air cleaner, additional relays, a zoning system, or something that was installed recently without its own transformer, it added to the load of the circuit. Hey, if you get a chance, please click the subscribe button on my channel and let me know that you've enjoyed the videos or they helpful in any way, subscriptions make a difference for us. It's pretty easy to do. I've put a link in the, in the comments of this video as well.